VV Brown on RTHK Radio 3 and Shark in the Water. How very appropriate. Well, it's my absolute pleasure because today is World Ocean Day to welcome to the programme, firstly, Andrea Ritchie from the Hong Kong Shark Foundation. Do join us on Facebook Live if you can. Morning Brew is the page and you can join in and ask questions and do whatever you like. Hello, Andrea. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for having me this morning. Great. Well, why don't you introduce our special guest today? Wow, great. Uh, Our special guest today, in honor of World Oceans Day, Mm -hmm. June 8th, is Charles Barker. And he's a three-time author, marine conservationist, hotelier, and um, he's written three books, and this is his third book called The Maritime Betrayal. Good to see you, Charles. uh, Welcome to the program, all the way from Islamabad today. Thank you very much. Yes, Phil. Islamabad, Pakistan. No sharks around here, though. No, well, not that kind anyway. I'm glad you've had your coffee. Uh, Andrea, why don't you tell us how today is very special before we get on to Charles's great new book? Thanks, Phil. Well, today is World Oceans Day, and the objective is to raise awareness about uh, the oceans and the animals that live in it and how, how, to show how important oceans are to us. And, of course, as sharks are apex predators... Um, they protect and maintain the delicate eco balance, marine eco balance of our oceans. And so I just want to emphasize that raising awareness to, for shark conservation is what our message and primary objective is. And it's, hard, it's important for all of us to protect sharks. Pretty much that's it. There's quite an alarming graphic. I think it's taken from a video on your Facebook page. I'm just putting the link to their Facebook page up now. It's Dead Easy HK Shark Foundation. Do join us on Facebook Live. You can see it all. Yeah, there's a video and you've got a startling message about uh, the most um, hunted creature in the ocean, something like that. Tell us what that's all about. Well, um, right now we are suffering a great amount of overfishing in the world. And we believe that about one third of the shark species is near extinction. And we rely on sharks to um, keep the oceans clean. We get 50% of our water, 50% of our air from the ocean. So protecting sharks is is really important and we're not doing enough of that um we're we're eating we're consuming over 100 million sharks every year and unfortunately 50 percent of that global trade comes right here through hong kong yeah. and you know it's a global problem but i think fortunately even though we're contributing to it we can actually make a difference here in hong kong you said we believe is it is there still a lot of stuff that we mm-hmm. just don't know Well, it is difficult. Um, We are not uh, marine uh, biologists. We are not marine scientific organization. We're an activist organization. So we rely on other um, trained scientists in this area. The the common number that we have, and we always are discussing this, is we estimate approximately 100 million sharks and rays are killed every year. But there is one marine biologist, Diego Cardenosa, in Colombia. He's in the movie Shark Water Extinction, and he personally told me last year that he believes the numbers are more like 270 million. Whatever the numbers, I mean, the fact is it's an immense problem, isn't it? I mean, we can just count on our fingers as much Cute. as we like. Charles, let it's me bring cool. in your uh, connection with, with Andrew and the Shark Foundation. Of course, your book. Tell us a little bit more. Um, I, I first became... Um, aware of the problem with shark finning. Uh, when I lived in Hong Kong um, back in 2010, yeah. 2011, and um, I was chairman of the uh, Club Managers Association of Hong Kong, mm-hmm. and we collectively, um, work, working with Bloom Association, um, uh, promoted the, the idea of banning shark's fin soup from all private members. Yeah. And then um, the, we, we engaged with the major hotel chains and we, we got a, a very high uh, measure of success with the uh, promoting uh, of not eating shark's fin soup. And, and uh, I think this is very much what Andrea works on, is the educating people to stop the demand. Yeah. That will be probably the way that one is able to make a, a global impact. Um, 
anyway, that, that as a background has, was something that always interested me. I've always had a passion for the oceans. And, mm. uh, it's not just sharks, it's whales and it, it's dolphins and um, everything. These yeah. creatures are suffering the most appalling abuses. Um, the, the dolphin culls in Japan and, and the Faroe Islands. Um, uh, whales are, are being um, hunted and, and killed uh, contrary to various global conventions and treaties. Um, and the, this whole problem of, of killing these, these fantastic and major creatures around the world, um, largely driven by organized crime mm -hmm. with countries turning a blind eye to, to um, what's going on. So I, I just felt inspired to write a book about it. And um, I, um, I, I wrapped it, uh, I wrapped it, the reality around a novel. Um, um, but, but the essential yeah. under message is um, organized crime is, is uh, trafficking, killing, and, and managing uh, a slaughter of creatures on a massive scale. Andrea, let me ask you this, because I was reading some of your press materials this morning. Uh, mm. You're talking mm. about the predational propensity, whatever, for organised crime. What are the simplest things that mm. happen illegally? So, sh just to make a point, shark finning is not illegal in Hong Kong. Yeah. It's the importation of endangered species under CITES, the United Nations CITES. And AFCD and Customs are the really the only organizations under um, CAP 586, uh, which allows them to have the power. Yeah. So um, there's been a push recently for us to, as animal rights and as NGOs, to support looking at shark finning as an organized crime um, issue. And uh, that would allow then the police to get involved, and that would give it more teeth. Currently, I really believe under AFCD and customs, it's a bit like a paper tiger. Yeah. And so we need more um, clout. We need more um, power behind it. Um, there is, there are just, you know, we, we are at a loss to, within the judiciary or within the government, to really convince them that this is a major problem. And we think that, you know, when we can convince public to stop buying it, then the killing will stop. But we really need the government to be behind us and support us on this. And looking at it from an organized crime, which is clear, Charles says this in his book. Yeah. It's, it, he makes that point. This is why I found his book so interesting. He makes that point that whether it's drugs or human trafficking or, or any of these things, they're all controlled by organized crime worldwide. So we need more of a worldwide concerted effort. Thing is, these guys, of course, it's controlled by organized crime. These guys aren't stupid. I mean, it's wholly illegal and despicable, but they do it very well, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. So and it's a multi-billion dollar industry from Costa Rica to Spain. You know, the country that eats the most shark in the world is Brazil. Really? It's not China. Yes. And the second largest is Italy, number one in Europe. And that's because in Italy, they don't eat shark fins. Those fins all come to Asia. But in Italy, they eat shark steaks. They eat, use the skin as uh, for shoes and belts. They use the shark liver as the oil to put in women's lipstick and makeup. Uh, it's in medicine, like squalene, which you can buy readily everywhere here. So it's not just a Chinese issue. This is a global problem, and we need to act locally to help the global crisis. So sometimes people would say, and I bet you've heard this, well, at least they use the whole creature. <laughs> you know, I, I don't subscribe to that either at all, but that is said, isn't it? Absolutely, that's said. And, and of course, um, we don't believe in that. We believe it's uh, zero tolerance is the best way, and um, it's a cruel and unsustainable practice okay and we, yeah, we need to change that the thing yeah. is like in, in the uk shark finning is illegal but shark catching and killing as long as you've got the whole animal that's okay um mm -hmm. it's not okay just to hack the fins off yeah and, and so the, the the approach from different countries around the world varies so much 
which makes the problem that much more difficult. I suppose, I suppose none of it's OK, and that's the point you're trying to make right now, because you're talking about an extinction issue down the line, I'm assuming, Charles. Um, absolutely. This is all driving towards extinction of a lot of species. Um, Andrea said a third of shark species are um, on the, uh, likely to become extinct in the next 10 years or so. Yeah. And, all right. Uh, can we turn our attention uh, to your book? Uh, you said it's fact. Obviously, you've done it in novel style. But can you just talk us through it? Anything you'd like to say, really? Well, the, 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 the story um, uh, looks at uh, three species, really, the, the sharks, whales and dolphins. And um, one woman's um, uh, fight to protect these endangered species. Would that be her? <laughs> um, no, I didn't know Andrea. Oh, because it's you to a T. <laughs> um, but... Uh, this this woman um, is uh, an ex special forces um, uh, soldier, yeah. and um, her father is a marine uh, biologist and conservationist, working in Hong Kong on the shark finning program. Okay, and he he pushes too hard um, and upsets people in government who are very much under the um, let us say control of, of um, triads. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't think it's ever track. going to be a secret, that part of it, Charles, you know. No, the, 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 um, the triads get fed up and um, uh, kill, assassinate her father. She manages to avoid being killed, but she was on the list as well. And so basically it becomes a story of re revenge. Hmm. Um, and she learns more about what the problem is and then... Goes after, goes after the the criminals who are perpetrating these these crimes, and that's very much under the triads in, in Hong Kong and the yakuza in Japan. So obviously, there's a lot of fact in this, Charles. But you've got to get the reader going. It does say novel, so you must have had fun spinning out the drama in this. Ab absolutely, and um, there are some. Uh, th th there's a lot of um, action, if you like. Um, quite violent action um, um, with the uh, triads, with the Yakuza. Um, this, this um, our, our, our heroine gets together with uh, one or two like-minded um, uh, people and, and they go on this crusade together to um, uh, stop these organizations. Um, and then driving that towards um, driving it towards getting world opinion on their side. So stopping the dolphin cull in, in Taiji, um, they, they uh, manage to get a lot of world attention. Um, people get very much behind them. They're like vigilantes of the ocean. Um, yeah. People like vigilantes. <laughs> they tend to in the story. They certainly... Uh, Andrea, tell me at this point how you got involved and obviously got very excited about his novel, etc. So Charles was kind enough to reach out to me and mention um, that he'd written this book. Yeah. And, uh, and he's, you know, we're a like-minded people and, you know, we're, we're passionate about sharks and the environment. And he said, look, I will donate 5% of the proceeds from the sale of this book to um, certain charities, maritime, marine charities. And if you're interested, and that's how we got started. So Charles is just a great guy, <laughs> a good soul. And he's, he's agreed to, to help fund us. You know, as a grassroots Hong Kong charity, um, good. We're, we're very much about volunteers. We're very much about seeking donations to keep us going. We don't have governments. What, what, what do these donations go on? It's always worth asking that. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, the donations go mostly to support our most um, effective and successful campaign, which is called uh, an education program called the Shark Ambassadors. Right. And last year I spoke to 10,800 students in over 45 schools. And this Shark Ambassador program basically plants the seed in kids to learn how to change and be the change for our future. And I really believe that the youth are our future. Mm -hmm. So we have a new website. People can go and donate on our website. And if they want to sponsor 
uh, one class hour of teaching, then that would be fantastic. We're currently looking for corporate sponsors that are interested in that. So definitely, I would be extremely interested in talking to. Let's go back to where we started. You mentioned something, I think you said about 2010, there was that big push to stop the hotels and restaurants serving mm. shark fin. Now, obviously, talking to children helps immensely. And I've seen loads of pictures of you dressed up as a shark and everything. But does it help? Because these kids are now 10 years older. Are they out at banquets eating shark fin or not? Well, this um, ability to quantify and actually know whether what the seed that we've planted will grow into proper trees is a real problem. But yeah. I think we can quantify it. And maybe Charles can speak about this because he's a hotelier, you know, and he knows about this, that that hotels, international hotels, have been very supportive of this international initiative. And um, I kind of like to get his view on that. We, we were talking more, or, or we weren't talking to children as much as we were talking to young adults. Okay. And so, for example, in, in hotels, the uh, uh, marriage ceremonies, um, marriage parties, big banquets, uh, persuading people and incentivizing people not to have shark's fin soup on the menu. How easy was that, peer pressure and all? Well, it, it, it was surprisingly easy, I thought, because um, we would say to a wedding party, have um, an extra night on the house. Um, <laughs> the couple staying over. So, you know, little incentives like that um, attracted people's attention and they went along with it. So that, that wasn't such a, a difficult issue. And I, I think people like that, um, people in their 20s then, as you say, now 10 years older, yeah. uh, that they probably got the message. And uh, uh, they don't go and eat shark skin soup because they were made, it was made so clear to them at the time. Oh. And they, they took advantage of, of the, the the, the benefits. Well, that, that's mission accomplished, hopefully, to, you know, to a large extent. We're very nearly out of time here. I've got but seconds left. Mm. Um, I'm going to put up a mm. nice picture of the cover of Charles's book on our feed right now before we say goodbye. And Charles, thank you so much and best of luck with everything you're doing. And the book looks absolutely beautiful. It's called The Maritime Betrayal, a novel by Charles Parker. See you, Charles, next thank time. You. Andrea, tell us Facebook pages, web pages, whatever you want. Yes. Well, you can reach us on our new website. You can go check us on Facebook, LinkedIn. We're very strong. WhatsApp, um, of course, you can WhatsApp me. But we're also on uh, Weibo in China. So we, we try to get people in China to follow us and uh, work together locally yep. to solve the problem. You know, and when the buying stops, then we believe the killing will stop too. Well, that's a great place to finish. Thank you both for joining us here on The Morning Brew this morning. We'll do it all again sometime soon. Take care for now, Andrew Ritchie and Charles Barker. It's nearly time for us to get to the news. Radio.